Hello, welcome to this Getting Started with SharePoint Framework uh, tutorial series. And this is the part three on, on the Hello World web part series. In this part, we actually take the web part which has been running in the online workbench. We package that and we will be then deploying that to the SharePoint page. My name is Sasha and I'm a project manager in the Microsoft 365 platform side. Now let's jump right into the code. <music> not technically into the code, but we'll start actually seeing what happens within the site. So recapping what we're going to do here uh, is that we've been testing the web port right now in the online workbench. So we've been running that within the site and workbench, which is then connecting to the local host, but we haven't really used it in the context of the page. So we haven't actually gone to the SharePoint site and tested out how it will look like. Now, if I would actually do that in a SharePoint site, so if I go in here and if I click edit, uh, we cannot find that web part. And that's because this selection and the speaker only shows those web parts which are actually approved and deployed within this tenant. So it does not expose any additional uh, web parts or settings uh, which are well running, especially stuff which is running from local host, because that could be potentially also a security challenge. So that's what, that's what we're going to do within this, well, in this tutorial and this part three, we're going to then package the code and put it available to be used within these pages. So we can start testing out things in a context of a page rather than just isolated web part in the workbench. So let me click republish. There we go. And let's move back into the code side. And let's actually start looking into how do we package this code. So first of all, I, I did do control C. So I broke the execution of the solution. And in the solution package, so let's actually close up some of these and then close all. And we can actually hide again the terminal a bit. So we'll have more space to walk to look into the packet solution. We actually touched this file in the tutorial, um, the part one of the tutorial series, if you remember, but this is the packet solution is really the file where we define how the solution is being packaged and how do we actually, what it will be the solution name um, and all of the behavior and all of that. So in here, as an example, um, the solution name will be my first web part and the solution title will be, or the, the unique name will be my first web part client side solution. That's pretty long name. So you can, of course, adjust them. There's going to be a unique ID, the version, all of that stuff. If you, and, and when you are deploying the, the actual production usage, you should look and take advantage of the developer tags, add some metadata and all of that stuff into the solution as well. So adding additional details, what the solution is doing. So really, really important file for packaging side. Now let's actually do quick packaging. So I'm going to do Gallup bundle and Gallup bundle actually then repackages or recreates the TypeScript files and transform them to be JavaScript files. So we're basically making everything ready to be packaged and deployed using the SharePoint framework solution package. Now, and then I'm going to do Gallup and packet a solution, which will then create me the solution file. And this is where it actually gets really, really interesting. So now as I execute the Gallup packet solution, there's a few things what will happen. So in the left menu, uh, we can see a new folder structure getting created. So there was the SharePoint folder getting created. And in the SharePoint folder, we have a debug folder. And this is actually really nice and convenient thing because this debug folder actually shows what's inside of this SBPKG file, which is a zip file. So what's packaged inside of it. And the reason why we have all of these assets packets in the one zip file is that now that I can actually go and say reveal in File Explorer, I can send this zip file or SPPK file in anywhere across the world and they would be able to install that to their tenant. And if you add, take advantage of the automatic hosting option, they wouldn't have to need to install anything else. So it's automatically hosted in Microsoft 365 for Microsoft Teams, for Microsoft Viva and SharePoint. And that's really, really, really convenient. Again, the content of that zip file, SBPKT file, is actually a zip file. 
So if I now open that one in here, we can actually see that the content of that file is exactly what we have in the debug file. So if you're wondering, on, okay, so what was actually packaged? What was the, the output of this transformation of my TypeScript and configuration? It is actually in this debug folder. So that's really, really easy then to look into these files, try to figure out what are the settings, what are the options and all of that. And there's a lot of, lot of let's say, technical details in this, uh, like the individual title, which will be then visible in the UX and the settings and the behavior and all of that. Good. So now we have the SPPK2 file that went a bit of an off, off the of the, the scope of the tutorial, but it's good to have some additional values. So let me actually go to the folder. There's the solution, there's the SPPK2 file. We already get that one deployed. So let's actually do that. So let me go to the tenant and let me go to the app catalog or to the catalog of the tenant. In my case, how would we find that in an easiest way? Well, we can actually see the manage app link over there because we went there when we created the app catalog. But let's actually do this in a bit of a hard way and a more difficult way. Let me go to the menu and let me go to the admin. So I'll show you how to get to the app catalog in an easiest way if you don't remember the URL. Um, in the Microsoft 365 admin center, show all. And then we go to the SharePoint. And in the SharePoint admin center, more features, quite a few clicks and apps. And this one will then redirect you to the app uh, catalog, the SharePoint uh, online app catalog. And you can, of course, access this directly as well. So you can take the URL and just request that URL and you will be redirected to the app catalog. Now, during this April 2022 situation, and we are right in the middle of rolling out the new experience versus the old experience, you might have this kind of a weird, bit of a weird situation that if you go through the farm settings and from the farm, uh, you will see a bit of a different look and feel. Where was it? This one. A uh, bit of a look and a diff different look and feel for your app catalog than when you access the URL directly. And this is because we are rolling out uh, this modern experience. And, in, and you can actually access the modern experience from here. Try the new manage app page. When I click that one, I will be then redirected to the new experience. And in here, I'm able to then install my solution. So not a, not a super complex thing, but it's good to know how the URLs are working and how where to find the app. Now, the easiest way to upload stuff is obviously you can, you can come in here, you can click to upload. That is one option. Or if we have the folder already open, like in our case, we can just simply track and drop the SPPK2 file to the app catalog, and that's going to upload the solution to be available. This one will then prompt us uh, the solution uh, approval. So the administrator needs to approve the solution. Um, and it's going to have some interesting details. This app will get data from local host. Do, 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 do. So that basically indicates that we are not yet ready fully packaged the solution. We are still this solution when it's being used is expecting the local host to be executing. And that is by design for now because we wanted to test this solution first in a page and then we'll do the proper packaging right after that. The second setting here is that uh, where is the app available? So is it available in all of the sites automatically uh, within this tenant, or do we only enable this app and then we are explicitly requested to install that on a site level? In our case, we want to actually do the site by site installation of this solution, but in the real world, so to say, or in the in the production, it might be really convenient if you have a web part which you want to be, be exposed for a lot of the people or all of the people in your tenant. You'll just click the enable this app and all, in all of the sites. And that means that it will be immediately available in the web part picker across the whole tenant rather than requiring go through the one by one installation and site level. But again, depends on a solution, depends on the objectives and the requirements uh, of that particular solution. In our case, we're gonna click only enable this app. We're not gonna install that to be available in all of the sites. So that's gonna enable that. There we go, and we're gonna close. And we can see that the state is being enabled. 
and it is a valid package. There's no exceptions. We can see where it's uh, available. And this one is really interesting as well. The solution by default, all of the, the web parts could be also personal um, applications or channel tabs in Microsoft Teams. So the, exactly the same code works with the snap of our fingers in Microsoft Teams. So it's really, really convenient. Let's not worry about that one in this tutorial though. Now let's go to our site. So where is our site? There is my developer site. And now that we have that solution available, I can go to the new, new web window and I can select new app. And in this new app selection window, I can then see my application to be available, to be installed on the site. If you would have a lot of, lot of, lot of applications, you can of course search the app by using the, whatever the app name is, and, and it will be filtering down only on those, well, based on the name. That I, that's what the filtering based on an app name I guess means. So in our case, we're going to click add and that's going to install that solution to this site. So that's now being added. Uh, we got the confirmation on it. And now if I go to the site contents page, I can actually see that the solution has been installed and the timeline when it has been installed uh, to the site. So that's kind of a convenient way of knowing what are the solutions which have been installed to the site. Now let's go a bit back to the Visual Studio Code before we actually test this. So calling out a few things. Now, in our dist folder, which is the one which we got packaged as a JavaScript files uh, in our code, we can still find uh, the web part GUID and manifest JSON file. And in here, we're basically saying this web part will be served from this URL. And that means that this web part right now, when it's being used in a SharePoint online, it will not work unless there's a response from this URL. So we're still in this mode where we're debugging using the local host. So let me actually enable this to be doing. So I'm going to run here, not follow up. I'm going to run Gallup, uh, serve, and then I'm going to do no browser because we don't want uh, the online workbench to actually start. So gulp serve no browser. And that's going to basically mean that let's start serving the file, but let's not open a browser to open up the workbench as we have configured in serve.json file. So now we're good to go. We can see that serve started in HTTP localhost. Webpack goes through. Uh, Webpack basically then transformed the TypeScript to be JavaScript. So in runtime, browsers only understand JavaScript, so they don't have to worry about that it was developed in TypeScript, which is really, really cool. And we can now say that everything is ready to go. So now if we go back in the site and if we go back in the home site, we could enable this. Well, let's actually do that. Let's put this page in the edit mode. And then uh, in the web part picker, we can actually see our hello world to be available or I can search for it. Hello world. And I can add that one in the page. And voila, now we have our report in the context of the page, in the context of the site. And I can actually modify uh, settings in the same way. And I can see how it will be reacting and exposed in among the other web parts which are within the site. So that's really, really convenient. So now I can basically do republish. And now we have a site where our custom web part is being probably rendered in the page, which is really, really cool. Now. Just to actually, just to prove the point, if I now go in, in the Visual Studio code, there we go. And let's do control C. So we're not running the local host. And if we do an F5 in here, we will have a problem because SharePoint Online cannot access those JavaScript files, which is, it is expecting to be available in that location. It will eventually time out and we'll get an exception in here. There we go. Oh, it's ex exception actually is visible in here. Um, and that exception details will be saying something like we cannot find object. Okay, well, that's not super helpful. But anyway, the, the loading is failing uh, because of that reason. So we cannot actually make things work because the local host is not running. But that's not how we should be doing stuff in production, right? We don't want to have local hosts running. So let's actually do the proper deployment and packaging of the solution. But let's do that in the tutorial number four when we are finally completing this Hello World tutorial series. So let's jump on the following video. Mm -hmm.